Imagine you had a really old phone and all of a sudden Apple or Google released a software update for it and it started working better to your pleasant surprise. Suppose I were to tell you that this is not very different from a new category of drug that makes this delicious plate of biryani, this gulab jamun and these potato chips suddenly feel uninteresting. A drug that can help people with diabetes control their blood sugar better than ever before. A drug that can make those struggling with obesity lose 15 to 20% of their body weight in just a year. That's like a 100 kg person dropping to 80 kg without surgery. This is not science fiction. It's GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic, Wegovi, Munjaro, and many others. And they're fundamentally changing how we treat diabetes and obesity worldwide, including right here in India, where we face a massive diabetes epidemic. It's estimated that close to 100 million people in India have diabetes and 136 million are pre-diabetic on the verge of getting diabetes. But how exactly do these so-called miracle drugs work? What's happening inside your body when you take them. I'm going to break down the science of GLP-1 drugs from first principles. No hype, no oversimplification, and importantly, no medical advice because I am not a doctor. Just simple high school science that you can understand before you speak to your doctor. Let's dive in. Let us first understand what happens normally in your body when you eat food. GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide, is a hormone your gut produces when you eat. Think of it as a messenger that tells your body food has arrived. It's part of an incredible system that evolved to help us process food efficiently. When you eat a plate of chole bhature or dosa, specialized cells in your intestine detect nutrients and release GLP-1 into your blood. This GLP-1 then travels to three main targets. One, your pancreas, where it tells beta cells to release insulin, but only when your blood sugar is high. Two, your stomach, where it tells the stomach not to send the food that is currently sitting there to the small intestine too quickly. So it slows down digestion so that your small intestine does not dump a ton of glucose into your blood too soon. And in carbohydrate-heavy Indian diets, this happens a lot. Three, your brain, where it activates satiety centers that make you feel full and satisfied. In healthy people, this system works beautifully. When you've eaten enough food, GLP-1 helps manage your blood sugar and tells your brain enough food for now. But here is the limitation. Natural GLP-1 only lasts for about two minutes in your bloodstream before an enzyme called DPP-4 breaks it down. It's a quick signal, not a persistent one. And it makes sense. Given that human beings evolved in times when food was not easily available, you don't want a hormone telling enough food too soon. And that brings us to these drugs. Let's first do a quick lesson in the basics of how drugs are designed. This is important because a lot of people in India don't quite realize how much sophisticated science goes into drug design. And this is a very simplified view, but enough for non-medical people like us to understand so that we can be smart enough to avoid internet misinformation about modern medicine. There are three steps in designing a drug. One, molecular biology, two, pharmacology, and three, clinical use. Let's start with molecular biology. Think of the body as a giant building full of locked doors. Each door controls a specific function like appetite, mood, or blood pressure. These doors have locks. These locks are specific proteins like receptors or enzymes. And only certain keys, molecules, can open or lock them. In fact, all of life on Earth works by molecules fitting into different unique three-dimensional shapes and changing the function of what that 3D shape does. Drug design starts with finding the right lock to pick. For example, a protein that causes disease when overactive. Scientists then design a molecule, a key, that fits that lock perfectly, turning it on like insulin release or off like stopping pain. This requires understanding the shape, charge and function of the protein. It's like shadi.com at the molecular level. Then we get to pharmacology. Designing the perfect key is not enough. It also has to get to the right door, work for long enough and leave the building safely. So we need to answer four questions. Absorption. 
can the key enter the building does it survive digestion if taken as a pill or does it need to be injected into the blood directly if your drug is a peptide meaning a protein it will get broken down and digested by your digestive system so it might have to be injected into your blood to bypass digestion distribution will the key travel to the correct floor the correct room with the correct lock essentially the correct organ metabolism how quickly will the building security staff send a swat team also known as liver enzymes to break the key down excretion how does the body throw the broken key parts out we are urine so kidney or stool large intestine this is the science of ADME absorption distribution metabolism and excretion the logistics of drug delivery inside your body and three clinical use once you have a promising key and this can take many years of experimentation we test it in three stages one is it safe when you give it to healthy volunteers does it cause harm two does it work when you give it to patients does it unlock the right doors and does it do better than not doing anything meaning better than letting your body's natural repair systems do their work three is it better than current options compared to existing drugs this entire process is like hiring a new security guard for your building you want that person to open only the right doors so no unintended side effects work reliably and not start shooting at people in the building meaning cause harm only after passing all this does a drug go to market and even then it's monitored for rare problems that show up only in the real world so now that you understand how this works let's see how glp1 drugs are designed the lock in question is the glp1 receptor and the drugs also called glp1 agonist meaning the key agonizes the lock don't ask me medical scientists tend to use terribly unfriendly names so the first step molecular biology is to design a molecule that are essentially modified versions of our natural glp1 hormone that way the key will fit because the drug has to fool the body into thinking that it is the same key like the naturally produced hormone then scientists engineered these molecules to do two critical things one resist the dpp4 enzyme that normally destroys glp1 quickly two figure out biochemical tricks to let the drug evade the liver swat team and stay in your body much longer so that it can do its work more effectively for example natural glp1 lasts about 2 minutes liraglutide lasts about 13 hours which is why it's given once daily and semaglutide it lasts an entire week which is why it's a weekly injection these drugs are like glp1's more persistent long lasting cousins when you inject them they find the same glp1 receptors in your body and activate them but instead of a brief signal they create a constant sustained effect unlike most medicines you take by mouth these are proteins that will be digested by your stomach that's why they're given as injections under the skin usually in the abdomen thigh or upper arm from there they slowly enter your blood stream for diabetes patients glp1 drugs are game changers primarily because they help control blood sugar in multiple smart ways first they boost insulin production but only when blood glucose is high unlike some older diabetes medications that can force insulin release regardless of blood sugar levels GLP-1 drugs only enhance insulin when you actually need it. This is really, really important. This dramatically reduces the risk of dangerous low blood sugar episodes. Second, they suppress glucagon, a hormone that tells your liver to release glucose into your bloodstream. In many type 2 diabetics, glucagon is abnormally high even after meals. GLP-1 drugs help fix this imbalance. third they slow stomach emptying if the biryani i showed earlier is digested more slowly glucose enters your blood stream more gradually preventing those dramatic sugar spikes that damage your body over time in diabetes patients glp1 drugs typically lower hba1c by about 1.5% a significant improvement but of course what has made these drugs famous is not their diabetes benefits it's their profound effect on weight when glp1 receptors in your brain are constantly activated several things happen one your hypothalamus the brain's appetite control center receives powerful satiety signals this is like saying oh i'm feeling full the reward pathways that make food seem pleasurable become less reactive 
your hunger hormone system gets recalibrated. Many patients describe it as that constant desire to eat food in their head going quiet. Food just becomes less interesting. Not unpleasant, just not something they think about much. As a result, patients naturally eat smaller portions. They don't feel the need to finish everything on their plate. They often stop snacking between meals. Many report losing interest in foods they once craved. The weight loss from GLP-1 drugs is not because they speed up your metabolism. It's almost entirely because they reduce calorie intake by making you feel satisfied with less food. In clinical trials, people taking these drugs lost about 15 to 20% of their body weight over a year. That's around 15 to 20 kg for someone who weighs 100 kg. This level of weight loss without surgery was previously unheard of. It's why these drugs are being called revolutionary. In addition to 100 million people with diabetes, India is also seeing rising obesity rates, especially in urban areas, driven by economic prosperity, more consumption of junk food, and I know people don't like hearing this, a traditional diet that is too rich in carbohydrates that is not suitable for a modern urban life that does not involve much physical labor. What makes GLP-1 drugs particularly relevant for Indians is our unique physiology. South Asians tend to develop diabetes at lower BMI levels than Westerners, what researchers call the thin fat phenotype. We often have more visceral fat, the dangerous fat around organs, even at seemingly normal weights. So I've explained how the drug works and how it can potentially be revolutionary for India. But it is now critical to understand the other side. These drugs are not magic pills without downsides. The most common side effects affect the digestive system. About 40 to 50% of patients experience nausea, especially when starting treatment. This happens because the stomach is emptying more slowly. This then causes the brain's vomiting center to get triggered because it's not used to food sitting around in your stomach for this long. It goes, oh, maybe this food is not good, so let me try and throw it out. Other common side effects include diarrhea or constipation. There are also rarer but more serious considerations. A small risk of pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, because this drug is triggering receptors in the pancreas. Gallbladder problems, partly due to rapid weight loss. Muscle loss alongside fat loss if protein intake is inadequate. And the Indian diet is famously not high on protein. And perhaps most importantly, when you stop taking the drug, the weight tends to return. Studies show patients regain about two-thirds of their lost weight within a year of stopping. This suggests these medications like blood pressure or cholesterol drugs may need to be taken long term. So who should take these drugs? Simple answer, even if I know, you should not take my word for it because I'm not a doctor and therefore not qualified to give you the answer. So get this very clear. These drugs are not approved for cosmetic weight loss or short term use. You want to lose weight before a wedding? Hit the gym and eat less carbs and more protein. This drug is not for you. Don't be swayed by celebrities irresponsibly promoting their own weight loss stories. You should not take medical advice from social media. If you're curious about this drug and watch this video, go speak to your doctor and let a medical professional decide if it's the right thing for you. This video is meant to explain how it works. It is not medical advice. In summary, GLP-1 drugs represent a genuine breakthrough in treating metabolic diseases. They work by amplifying a natural hormone system that regulates how we process food and feel hunger. Are they perfect? No. The side effects, cost, need for injections, and long-term requirement are significant limitations. But for many people struggling with diabetes or serious obesity, they offer a biological intervention that was previously unavailable. They actually change the physical signals your body sends about hunger and fullness. India faces unique challenges with these medications, cost barriers, storage requirements, and ensuring they reach the patients who truly need them rather than being misused for cosmetic purposes. And we have a larger problem of people trusting pseudoscientific misinformation on WhatsApp more than actual medical science. The meteoric rise of GLP-1 drugs also teaches us something profound about obesity itself, that perhaps we've been thinking about it all wrong. It turns out that obesity is not just a matter of self-control. When healthy people tell obese people that they just need to improve their willpower, we are not just being unempathetic, we are also being unscientific. 
These drugs suggest that for many people, obesity may involve a disorder of appetite regulation at a hormonal level. You cannot control hormones with willpower. For thousands of years, we humans evolved in environments where food was scarce. India particularly has a long history of famines because of the dependence of agriculture on annual monsoon rains. And monsoons are dependent on long-term climate patterns that regularly cause too little or too much rainfall every few years. So our bodies develop powerful systems to make us eat and survive when food was available. Now we live surrounded by cheap, highly palatable, always available foods, but our biology has not caught up. GLP-1 drugs offer a promise of essentially updating this ancient programming. It is, as I said right at the beginning, like Apple or Google releasing a software update for a really old phone model. Explaining the science of food and debunking pseudoscience is hard work. So I request you to consider becoming a member of this channel. Members get to be part of a private group that will work together to dig into the science of food in far more detail and also discover the true joy of food.